Yo, what up, people? All right, if you're new to my channel, my name is Tamim, and this is Tamim Tech. Not a lot of technology going on in the background, but this is my channel called Tamim Tech, and I re review and cover cell phones, headphones, and smart home accessories, and some other techie stuff. If you have suggestions, what you want me to review, leave a comment below. Today, we are reviewing the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I got it in space gray, graphite, same thing, literally the same thing. I don't get these color schemes, but they come in Pacific blue, silver, gold, and space gray. This is space gray to me, no matter what. Graphite is literally the same color, man. It's just different stuff, different names, but it's still space gray to me. It will forever be space gray to me, but this year it's graphite. So we got the graphite in the building and I'm gonna cover the things that I don't like and cover the things that I like, give you some, uh, real world experiences that i've had with the phone and if it's a good phone to have good phone to keep is it worth your money we will find out in this video together so let's get into it Ugh. I think I messed up the camera angle a little bit when I did that with that transition thing, that you know, camera stuff. But here's the design of the iPhone 12 Pro Max. I got a little B-roll for you too. But the design of the iPhone 12 Pro Max has got that squared off stainless steel frame that can get smudges on it. So if you don't like that, get a phone case or constantly wipe it off with a handy dandy microfiber cloth. Have these handy if you wanna rock this phone naked in the nude. I wouldn't suggest doing this because it's uh, over a thousand dollars and why would you want to risk scratching the frame and the glass? And speaking of the glass, it's a ceramic shield for shatter protection, but it's still glass. And you know what happens to glass? If it, it comes in contact with something that can scratch it, it gets scratched. And you don't want to do that. It'll take down your resale value and all this other stuff that you don't want to experience. So. Get a screen protector, get a phone case. I have Spigen, tough armor, great phone case, and it has a kickstand. Or you can rock the OtterBox Symmetry Clear for that ultimate protection with the raised lips and all that stuff. But this isn't a phone case review. So let's talk about uh, the design and the display in here and the things I like and don't like. Play on here is a 6.7 inch OLED Super Retina XDR display. What does that mean in English? It's an OLED screen. It's just an OLED screen manufactured by Samsung or LG. I imagine Samsung and it's color calibrated to Apple standards. That's it, that's all you need to know. High resolution, it's like almost 2K, a little over 2K, around that range. So if you wanna know that, then there you go. So you get nice sharp images, nice sharp video. Your movies and TV shows look nice and clear. The speakers sound great. We'll get in a speaker test in a little bit. And yeah, it's, it's big, it's big, but I have decent sized hands. So if you wanna put my hands right there, my hands are decent sized, so it doesn't bother me as much for all my little hand people out there with their little baby hands. This phone might not be for you because you'll be struggling and adjusting and all this other stuff. And yeah, if you have baby, baby ass hands. Look at those hands, are they small hands? <laughs> then maybe to get the 11 Pro or 12 Pro because it's 6.1 inches and it has that little happy medium because the next smallest size is the iPhone 12 mini, which is 5.8 inches, I believe. Either way, it's under six inches, so it's gonna be small and fits your tiny hands. But for me, I got big enough hands and I love rocking bigger phones. So let's get into the first thing that I like is the size. I love the size because it's huge. You get a nice big canvas to watch movies on, play your games, do art. If you do art on your phone with your fingers, if you do that, man, you got skills, but I need a pencil for that. But yeah, I like the size. The display is nice. The thing I don't like about the display is the notch. Now it's 2020, a lot of things have been going on and Face ID is still the pro priority on this phone. But the iPad Air 4 came out and they put a fingerprint sensor on the power button. But this technology did not come on this phone. I don't know why they didn't put the power button 
or let the power button have a fingerprint sensor on it, knowing what's going on around the world. But you know, convenience isn't a priority for Apple. It's all about making our money and making minimal upgrades, because that's pretty much what this is. If you're coming from the 11 series, it's a minimal upgrade. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into that later in the video. So if one another that, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in. Another thing that I like about the phone is how bright it can get. You get 800 nits of brightness, which means when you go out in sunlight, pure sunlight, you'll be able to see your screen just fine because 800 nits is nice and bright. To compare that with other devices you might have, uh, let's see, the iPad Pro is 600 nits max brightness, MacBook Pro is 500 nits brightness, MacBook Air is 400 air nits brightness. This is the brightest of them all. So when you're out in pure sunlight, it's gonna be bright. When you're watching HDR content, it automatically boosts up to 1200 nits because HDR content can be kind of dark. So that's another thing that I like about this phone when it comes to the display. It's phenomenal. Bro. All quality on here is good. It has improved and that is all thanks to 5G and it's all it's magic. No, it's due to Qualcomm X55 modem being in here, which also enables you to have 5G, but Qualcomm is a better modem than Intel when it comes to call quality. So other reviewers have said they have noticed connectivity issues being minimal when it comes to call quality and improved connection when making phone calls. Now, how do people sound? They sound clear. They sound clear to me. I sound clear to them. Speaker phone is good because the speakers on here are good. So no issues there at all. So call quality, when you're getting this phone, there's no issue, no worry, it's fine. Now, if we're talking about connectivity with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, I think this has Wi-Fi 6 capabilities. I'm not sure. I forget. Let me know in the comments. Uh, Wi-Fi never drops off. It's fine. Bluetooth 5.0, it's fine. The only issue I ever had was it takes a little bit for it to connect to my car. When I had my Note 20 Ultra, it connected to my car instantly. No gripes there. Just a little minor inconvenience. It's fine. We're moving on. Not a deal breaker. It's gonna be okay. This phone is fast. It has the A14 Bionic chip. The most powerful cell phone chip on a phone today. Apple is very good at making in-house chips. Unlike Samsung. But yeah. Apple makes really good in-house chips. So the i A14 Bionic chip is good. Will you see a difference between this year's chip and last year's chip? Honestly, no. Because the difference in speed when opening apps and scrolling the web are not gonna be supersonic and they're not gonna be substantially different where it's like, oh my God, it's a game changing experience. Between the A12 chip and the A14 chip, real world experience, scrolling through the phone and a lot of stuff, is, it's gonna feel the same, to be honest. But when it comes to rendering and exporting high quality photos and 4K videos, and you're doing editing on all these editing apps, you will see the difference there because the render speeds on here will be faster and to compare it with other devices again this a14 chip is also on the latest ipad air 14 ipad air 4 so and those benchmarks on the ipad air 4 are more powerful than the ipad 12 this is a tongue twister i'm sorry <laughs> the ipad pro 12.9 i almost want to say ipad pro max all these maxes man too many maxes max millions gosh okay so the A14 is a powerful chip. Real world experience, you won't notice a difference. But opening apps on here is pretty fast. The experience is smooth. It's only a 60 hertz display. I don't like that because it's supposed to have ProMotion, 120 hertz, just like the iPad Pro. But we didn't get it because it didn't meet the standards and battery life is a concern since you have 5G, a smaller battery size, and then 120 hertz. And it's gonna take a toll on the battery and we want all day battery, right? So Apple decided not to do that until they get the LTPO technology on their screens for the next iPhone. And LTPO technology is where you can, you have it on the Apple Watch, the latest Apple Watches, Series 5 and 6. It has LTPO technology, it changes the variable refresh rate. So when the Apple Watch is idle and always on display, the refresh rate goes down, so it's not being used and that uses less power and it saves battery. And when you're using it, it comes back on and the refresh rate goes back up to what it should be so you can have a nice, smooth user experience. So when that gets back on the iPhone 13, hopefully it meets standards and we get ProMotion display and hopefully bigger batteries to accommodate 5G and 120 hertz. And if Apple chooses to go 6.9 inches with their max line, then we're gonna need that bigger battery, Apple. Give us the bigger battery. All right, so speed on here is fine. It's fast, it's a smooth phone. Despite having 60 hertz, you will not 
not be happy with how you have your scrolling experience through your social media feeds and all that super duper fun stuff that we like to do during lockdown. The RAM. <coughs> if you guys want me to talk about RAM for my nerdy techies out there, 60 gigabytes of RAM, iOS does not need 12 gigabytes, 64 gigabytes of RAM to run efficiently and keep apps open because you have a hardware and software optimization and when the same company has control over both of these things, you get a really smooth experience. So unlike its predecessors on the Android side, and I do love Android phones, I primarily came from Android before I hopped on the Apple wagon. So if you're at, attacking me in the comments about that, shut up, stop it, get some help. Stop it, get some help. But yeah. The RAM on here doesn't need to be high, but they did boost it to six gigabytes of RAM, so apps, more apps can stay open in the background. So I haven't had any issues with refreshing apps and all that. All good here with the RAM. And watching videos on here is amazing. If I didn't, I'm gonna say it again. The only reason why it kinda sucks is because it's a notch, but you get a bright display, HBO, Netflix, Disney Plus, it all looks good on this display and it sounds amazing. And you have spatial audio from Airport AirPod Pro Max and AirPod Max if you have those. This sounds phenomenal. It sounds like you're in a movie theater. Excuse me. It sounds like you're in a movie theater and it's a phenomenal experience. You just have to have it to know what it's like. There's no way I can show it to you. I wish I could, but I can't. The cameras. Let's talk about the cameras. The cameras on here are supposed to be better and the best cameras in the iPhone 12 line. Is it though? Is it though? I don't have all the 12 series lines, but from all the videos I've seen, if you're buying the iPhone 12 Pro Max for the better camera experience, don't do that. Because it's, from what I've seen on all the videos and all the research I've done before I bought this phone, it's literally minimal, minimal. And you get a worse telephoto lens technically. So you get an F aperture of 2.2, which lets in less light than 2.0 on the other phones. And you get 2.5 X zoom, 60 millimeter equivalent zoom. So when you're shooting portrait mode, you only get 2.5 X, which means you have to back up more. And 2X is not there, it's not an option. It'll be digital if you tried it. And then you have the standard wide angle, of course. So. You get a worse telephoto lens and this is a plus and it's supposed to be a game changer and make all the world's difference with the bigger sensor that's on here 47 percent bigger than the last year's model and a bigger wider aperture f 1.6 but all these phones have that all the 12 series lines have that and you get bigger pixel microns at 1.7 microns but literally if you look at other camera reviews and comparisons there's no difference. It's very minimal. The only thing you'll notice is that the night mode on the wide angle lens takes a shorter amount of time because it can already bring in a lot of light. Other than that, it's the only difference. So if you're choosing this phone because of its camera, don't do that. If you want to be comfortable with the smaller sizes, do that. You'll still get good battery life, I'm sure, and that's all based on your usage. But yeah, the wide angle is the super wide angle is good. You get 126 degree field of view. So pictures on that are nice. They're soft around the edges, but they're nice. They could be sharper. The wide angle is good, but uh, with the bigger sensor and the wide aperture, you might have to back up a little bit for your subjects compared to the other 12 series lines phones and telephoto we already talked about. You do get night mode and all of the sensors finally so all the sensors have night mode and the front facing camera finally has night mode finally catching up to android about time apple this is why i'm having, hopping on the apple train late because they're catching up to android finally especially with the widgets and app library finally finally but i digress i'm only with apple because the ecosystem works for me my family has it my friends have it doing these videos and exporting videos on the iPad has been a great experience. The render speeds are a lot better, but now I figured out how to use Adobe Premiere on my desktop and utilize my RTX 2080 graphics card a little better. So I'm back on Adobe and I wish Adobe Rush was better on there, but I'm getting sidetracked. So the cameras on here are good. Let me give you some photos and video examples because I'm talking way too much. Shut me up.
a 4K24 with a bright monitor in front of you. Oh, yeah, I am currently editing the video you're watching right now. I just want to leave a comment on the HDR and SDR videos that I provided as examples for video footage. Now to me, the SDR looks a little better than the HDR and I'm not sure why that is, but the HDR does have a lot of information in it so you can tweak it and edit it in MW Premiere as I tried that out and it turned out just fine if you add some tweaks to it here and there. And the SDR, I didn't need to tweak it, I just like the way it looked. So it could be software, I'm not really sure. I think Adobe has the compatibility to work with this type of codec, so it should be fine. But um, I just want to leave a comment about that and just say that standing, standing, ugh, standing dynamic range looked a little better in this case. But, mm, oh well. Keep watching the video, it's almost over. I promise. Life on here is good. I get 7 to 10 hours of screen on time. It's all based on usage. Battery health has been better than 11 Pro Max. It didn't degrade within the month that I had it. Still at 100%. Uh, you get 15 watts of wireless charging only with MagSafe. That's stupid, stupid Apple. And 7.5 Qi wireless charging. And you get 20 watts fast charging. Improvement over the 18 watt from last year, but no charger in the box. So that sucks. You gotta buy your own charger. To save the environment, you gotta buy more boxes and throw away more boxes. That makes a lot of sense, Apple. At least you're making yourself based off recycled materials. Are you though? But yeah, the battery life on here has been good. No complaints there. You can last all day. No more to be set there. Was it worth your money? Should you buy this? If you can afford it, yes. If you're coming from the 11 Pro Max, should you buy this? That's up to you. I would say no. If you want to save money, you're on a budget this year, no. The 11 Pro Max to the 12 Pro Max, there's very minimal difference. You get a LiDAR sensor to check people's height and do nighttime portraits. And that's pretty much it with the LiDAR sensor. And you get bigger sensors and better at photography, computational photography. You get night mode on all the lenses. That's actually really nice. So having night mode on all the lenses is nice. If you care about photography and you want that night mode on all the lenses, Get I don't know why Apple can't just do a software update and allow night mode on the older models since it's literally a software thing. It's not even hardware, it's software. But Apple is doing that to make you buy the newer phones. Camera gate? I don't know. Night mode gate? Let me shut up. But yeah, if this is worth the money, if you want the big phone, you should have no problem with the regular Pro, the regular 12, or the mini. So yeah it's worth the upgrade if you're coming from the 11 series lower than 11 series and up so if you like this video hit that bell icon for more content hit that like button to support me let my channel grow so i know 99 percent of you are not subscribed so 99 percent of you please subscribe so my channel can grow so i can get more just get my channel out there and help me grow so i can make more content for you guys because i care about your wallets as much as i care about my wallets so iPhone is worth your money if you have it. The Mini is worth your money if you have it. And I'll talk about the other phones if you want me to talk about them. So leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Peace.